All right, what's up, my friends? Welcome to Draft Smith Takes the Wheel. We have technology. We do this once a set, and of course, if you watch Bronson Mythic, you know I talk about this all the time. We uh, are sponsored by Untapped.gg, which is a free uh, app you can download to track all your games and stuff like that. Link is in chat and on the YouTube. And of course, Untapped has the Draft Smith feature, which you always see on all these drafts, which is a draft helper. And you see the rankings here are the static LSD rankings, but the number down here, more importantly, is the dynamic Draft Smith ranking. And it takes pulls the data from all the games played on tapped as well as the cards you already have to help you draft now what we're about to do today is not what i recommend uh the draft smith uh, ratings are more like guidelines than rules you shouldn't follow them blindly but they're there to help you out if you're struggling or if you're a newer player uh but they're not going to give you like a pro tour level draft deck so what we're about to do is what exactly you're not supposed to do but we're going to do it anyway and we're going to follow every single rating completely blind. So whatever pick they say, to, whatever card they say to take, we're going to take. And they're slamming Thumbing Bird here, which is uh, honestly out of a, a heinously bad pack. Um, this pack is atrociously bad. Uh, so we're going to take Thumbing Bird. And how this works is we take whatever card is rated the highest based on the Draftsmith rating. And the tiebreakers are rarity. And then if the rarity isn't a tiebreaker, um, I get to choose. That's going to be the uh, thing. So... Pack two here, and we see. Oh, that was close. We got a Watcher at thirty, Annex Entry at thirty at thirty three. Now, Drathmith, Drathmith does a good job of evaluating the cards themselves. It doesn't always do a good job about thinking about them in the context of archetypes, which is a really, really important factor in this particular format, where a card like Annex Entry is like a white green white. I guess it's just good at everything, but. Uh, I guess a card like Watcher, right? It's more of a blue-white card than anything else because you want to play it in your blue-white artifact deck and not much else. The Stalker's more of like a green-white or black-green card because you don't want to play it in your like red-green deck, really, and so on and so forth. So we'll see how it's going to go here. And while this is definitely not the optimal way to draft, our drafts would take the wheels. Our last few, we have a 7-0. We have a few 7-win runs, a few 3-3s also. Uh, we do this once a set. It's a lot of fun. And Annex is our next pick. And like, I would never start a draft... Thumbing Bird into Annex Century, but we'll see where it takes us. Oh boy. Okay. So another pretty weak pack here. Uh, nothing super exciting. And Drasmith's going for Incisor Glider over Mandible Justicator, which is pretty interesting. Obviously a better card in Infect deck. This is a better card in Artifact deck. So I'm curious to see where this takes us uh, because I would definitely not take Glider, Glider here, third pick. I would probably take the, uh, the Mandible Claw because it's another bad pack, honestly, but uh, we'll see where it goes. Honestly, so the glider's coming in, and uh, again, we're following the draft smith blindly, and we're going to do whatever it says. Obviously, we'll be playing the games ourselves, but next pack comes up, and woo, we're going to be going some artifact stuff. We got the Swooping Lookout, a card that I have rarely put in my deck, but obviously is fine if you're playing the artifact deck or the equipment deck. And uh, so far, Incisor Glider and Sentry, and nothing else is even close here. A fairly weak pack. I mean, I love Rustvine Cultivator. Honestly, I can see taking the Expanse here, too. I love taking the Expanse early to keep things open. Uh, but, yeah. All right, look at it is. You missed it. We finished Bronson Mythic last night. Um, White's open, at least. It's pretty good. And uh, whereas I'm super late, that'll go up on YouTube soon. Wow, so many close calls here. Look at this. 35, 32, 34, 33, 34. Wow, so by very, very slight uh, margins, the Mandible Claw takes it. And Mandible Claw. I wish this glider was a Mandible Claw from last pack, but what can I do, right? Z resub, thanks so much. Appreciate that. So, take the Mandible Claw. Gonzo resub, thanks so much. Wow. All right, so Drasmith gets totally uh, totally paid off here because white is super open. Very late Planet Disruption. We see the nice Flame Shield here on our uh, our sixth pick. Also a Dune Mover and a couple other cards, a couple other white cards too. So, slam the Pacifism. And it's going to be interesting to see how it finds our second color. Uh, Lattice Blade Mantis. Okay, so again, this is a card quality pick where card quality wise, this is the best card in the pack by a mile. Doesn't jive very well with our white artifact stuff so far, but we'll see what happens. Take the, uh, take the Lattice Blade Mantis, a very, very good green card. Why does Jasmine love Skywarden? I don't know, honestly. I, uh, I don't have a good answer for you. And this time we see a Hunter Maze. All right. We'll take our second green card is going to be a land. Sure. Why is pacifism so much better than the sleep? Because it costs two and not three. And the sleep costs double blue. And blue is one of the worst colors. Two and three are, are night and day. You know? 
All right. Um, yep. Yeah. All right. I guess the Hunter Maze it is. Here's our opening pack returning. And we see the Surgical Bay over Escaped Experiment. I don't even, I don't even have any blue cards. Not that I love Escaped Experiment or anything, but all right. Sure. Surgical Bay it is. Uh, Blazing Crescendo. All right. Pretty weak pack, obviously. The cards here aren't particularly great, so... Let's see uh, where this takes us, honestly. I'm curious to see... It's always interesting to see, like, how it navigates the colors and stuff. So, Late Hazardous Blast is fine. Uh, we got a Prologue here, probably. All right, yep, yeah, Prologue. So, not a great pack one. Um... And then a light bringer. Okay. Pack two open up. Ooh, okay. Open up Kaido Dancing Shadow. Uh also Vorak, Skitterfang, Mandible Claw, Charge of the Mites. And not even really considering the Kaido. We only have two blue cards, they're both pretty bad, honestly. This kind of makes sense. And then obviously Skitterfang's super safe, makes every deck a very solid card regardless. So um alright, Skitterfang it is. Passing some white cards, hopefully we table a good white card. On fire with the skin thing. Ooh, Ravager's so good. It's one of the best uncommons in the set. All right, so we're staying the we're staying the white path. It looks like the attendant is quite good. I like attendant. Um, Sizer glider. I feel like this one's a little messy. Honestly, it's drafts have had some clean drafts in the past where like we're just black white and just open or whatever it is but this one seems a little feels a little challenging but i'm very curious to see how, how this one pans out so take the attendant we get past a late anoint with affliction uh but wants to watch her instead so wants to stay in blue white it looks like a blue white artifacty stuff um we have zero black cards very very close on the anoint but gonna go for the the watcher here and it's weird that white doesn't seem that... Actually, beat a pass at these amount of white cards, too. Does any cards of a sideboard affect the algorithm? I don't think so. I actually don't know, to be totally honest. So, here's the Watcher. Shepard looking pretty good here. Take that Shepard. There it is. The gold. Gold little thing there. 30 for the Shepard. Shepard's great, obviously. Charge of the Mites. Spell Bomb. A late Vorak and a late Mantis. Wow, green pretty open here. But Charge of the Mites obviously plays, so... Charge it is. Filigree Silix, another Incisor Glider. And it wants a Silix, okay. I don't think this card... This is another issue where, like, I think that archetype-wise, this card is very good in red-green oil and good in blue-black proliferate and not really great otherwise. I think Ratchet Bomb's pretty bad. Uh, but what can I do? My hands are tied, folks. I got... I got... My hands are not on the wheel. I am just a passenger. I'm your passenger. Wow, another late Shepherd. So white super open at least. That's pretty good. Another Shepherd. And a late flensing Raptor also. Unfortunately, Raptor's like not very good in our deck. Because we're not really doing the uh the infect thing, but Charge of the Mites or Enforcer. Charge of the Mites here, I assume. Alright. And Pretty blank pack. Probably take the bay here. Down by the bay. So it looks like we're blue white. I mean, I think it's like it looks like we're blue white. But we literally have like four blue cards. So we're definitely white. And we have like two hazards blast and a crescendo, one mantis, and then three blue cards. I think the best thing we get that could ever happen to us is opening the Phyrexian Vindicator and just like it pushing into the mono white. All right, so unnatural restoration. Is it the land here? For sure, take the land. Thanks, Spear. Appreciate it. Drass Myth takes the wheel. Uh, Molten Rebuke. Yeah, so I don't like how it's uh, kind of owned in on on blue here. We just aren't really blue at all. Uh, it's taking like, like the rare, isn't it? The rare's not even good in our deck. Oh, no. Wow, actually. Gonna, gonna pop on over to Infectious Bite. That's interesting. Um, we're almost mono white, and there's no good white cards in us back. There are a lot of good cards in other colors. There's actually a great card in every other color. There's a great green card, a great red card, a great black card, a great blue card. 
Uh, and even though we have blue cards, this is a kind of not very good nerd deck because based on the, uh, the context of like what it is, oil spell card. I guess copying Charge of the Mice isn't that bad, but all right, we're uh, we're touching green now. We only have one green card. It is good. Uh, and green doesn't play well with our artifact stuff, but what can I do? Looks like we're biting. Wow. Okay. Rare taken. Ossification. Bladed Ambassador. Charge the Mites. We got that fire shield. Slam the Ossification. And the good news is the white is open. So what white card does it want here, actually? It wants the Hover Wings. Interesting. Um, I think that... I guess Shepard's a little better than Hover Wings, but we have already have two of them, so... All right, we got wings. Red Bull. What's up, Sky? Makes three sub. Mandible Claw or Attendant? Man, I would slam the Mandible here. Uh, Mana Curve is so important. Oh my God, this is this is the first like truly egregious pick. I think we already have like a couple four and five drops, and we have literally whoa, two two drops. Ooh, I hate this pick. Drasmith. I hate that. I'm grabbing the wheel. I'm grabbing the wheel. I can't. I can't change them though. All right. Attendant it is. If you're shooting it, folks. This draftsman takes the wheel. Ooh, century. So bronze I think is over. And no, basilica over century. I think I'd rather be blue and be century. Why would you do this to me? Why do you value this card so high, draftsman? You're drunk. Go home. So um, the numbers you see is the draftsman helper. That we always have on because they sponsor us. And this we always do one episode of uh, the series where I just follow the rankings blindly. Which is not a smart thing to do. It's more of a helper. But but yeah. Alright. Take the Basilica. We got a, a Gold Warden. A Gold Warden's Helm. Another Lattice Blade. Alright. Yeah, I think Drasmus has been drinking a little bit. This has been, this has been a very tough seat, honestly. But that's Lattice Blade. We have a literally infinite four draw. Oh god, I'll do it again. We have literally infinite four drops. Oh man. This has been a rough one. I think we 7 0 the last uh, Draftsman takes the wheel. So we were due for a dud. Um, this is why you need, a, you need a little bit of human ingenuity. You can't just rely on the machines. Our, our eighth four drop. Uh, Fuseling? I'm curious what deck it's going to build, honestly. Like, the signals have been so all over the place. Another glider. Okay. Wow. The ambassador tables. That's a good sign. Damn. Two drop. Flesh cutter. Please don't take the, the goddamn land. All right. Thank God. Flesh cutter. Take the helm, please. All right. They're tied, so I get to choose. Thank God. Give me the helm. God, if we had like three mandible claws, I could actually be pretty good. All right, so what's it going to build here? This has been a tough one. This has been, I think, probably the 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 roughest draftsman takes the wheel. Again, our last one, I think we 7 out or 7 one All right, so what does it want to build? Celestia. It actually loves the deck, too. <laughs> well, weird they would love the deck that it built. But, all right, so Celestia it is. Build this deck. Super easy. Barely an inconvenience. So we go right here. You can see it highlights the cards and the overlay. You just go out. Out. Wait. Uh-oh. There was just an update. Oh, I'm sorry. I am looking at I'm looking at it wrong, my bad. This it's here. So yeah, it's the, the overlay. It's it's talking about this card, not this card. So I want to remove the it moves thing, remove this thing. Remove the Flesh Cutter, Watcher, Prologue, Thummingbird, Crescendo, Thrill, uh, Gold Warden, Lightbringer, Rebuke, Bardic, plus two planes, minus two Surgical Bays, and there's your deck. So it builds the deck for you, and uh, I guess our, our Mana Curve is as bad as I thought it was. I mean, we have, we have I mean, six four drops is an insane of this format. We also have... I can just say that's not that bad. So we have Blade and Ambassador, Double Glider. The problem is that, like, again, the Draftsmith is a machine. It's looking at the cards and their individual values, but it's this is a very, very archetype-driven format. I'm writing an article on this, honestly. I just finished Bronson Mythic last night. I write an article uh, talking about this because it's very important to note that, like, Incisor Glider is not 
a white card. It's like a white green. It's more like, more like a white black or white, maybe blue white card. Because you want to be playing at certain archetypes. Mandible Claw. Uh, this card, is it's okay in your you know green white deck. But not really great. Uh, machines, picking machines. We are the Borg. You will be assimilated. Resistance is futile. Um, you know, so like the the hover wings is more of like a red white or blue white card. You know, there's just like a lot of cards in this set where they're like pseudo gold cards. Uh, Prologue of Variasis is mostly just a blue black card. You know, and if you're just looking at the cards for the colors that they are, you end up like this, where you kind of just have like this pile of cards that like that are individually ranked highly because of how they perform but they're not going to perform as well because they're not putting them in the right spots to succeed so this is a rough one honestly again i think dressment is a great tool we've had multiple seven win runs this is one of the more ugly ones i've seen but i think it's a part of the context of the format uh whereas a format like dominari united you can just like take the good cards and kind of like do your thing and end up with a good deck but this is a definitely a, a challenging one so we'll see what happens we're going to play the deck as built usually what we do is we play the deck as built with the first like four games and then i'll, I'll, I'll change it to the deck that i would have built personally uh, but that's, that's it. Drasma takes the wheel. So let's get right to the games. And I also want to remind you to download it for yourself. Use my links, please, in the YouTube description or the chat. And then uh, let's bring you the, uh, the little sponsored stick, and then we'll get to the games. In the search for the ultimate weapon, knowledge is power. Introducing Draftsmith, your new secret weapon for Magic the Gathering Arena Limited Mode. Draftsmith helps you pick the perfect card every time by providing an in-depth rating for each card. These ratings adapt based on the cards you've already chosen, making sure you always stay one step ahead of the competition. After the draft is done, Draftsmith recommends the optimal deck based on the cards you have chosen. No more, win more. Download Draftsmith today from untap.gg. All right, folks, download it for free. Use the link in the chat or in the description chat coming out. I think it's gonna be a rough one, honestly. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna keep this angry. We aren't playing many two drops. Uh, a little clunky, but don't know what have played all three uh, sack lands either. But predictions, I mean, sure, we can do a prediction. First to go. This is an interesting one. I mean, seven wins, yay or nay? What do you think, folks? Usually, it's from Mythic, obviously. So predictions are here. If you want to place your bets, what do you think? Seven wins, yay or nay? Drasmith takes the wheel. We're also in Mythic. So this is going to be a tall order. Don't want to, want to temper expectations here. Char Forger? Sure. And Sizer Glider. Alright. I mean... That could be worse, I guess. We're going to attack. Not loud, right? Um, I mean, I want to indoctrination attendant, honestly. But I, don't, I guess I'll just bounce a land, whatever. I want to play this next turn, too, though. We could just glider, but, like, we're not really there yet. So, yeah, whatever. Just bounce a land. If I had a land in my hand, I wouldn't do this, because I do. I'm just going to bounce a land. I would love to cast this next turn, but... More stuff I'm playing for charge of the mites, too. Obviously. All right, um... Attack for two. Not trading here. Do you find the dress has been a little weird this set? Um, yeah, there are some weird, some weird ones, honestly. I think LSD's ratings are a little off, unfortunately. I've already suggested to Draftsmith that they do a like two-week review. Because the ratings from LSV are based on the literal, you know, the first set review that comes out on day one. And there's always cards you miss on day one, you know, so. Alright. Um, if we attend it again, yeah, we're actually gonna try to set up Shepard here. We got punished by drawing the land, obviously, but. Gotta get in the 4 1. Alright, no blocks. Ugh. That's not that bad, actually. Gotta kill a mite. Alright. And then Graver. So the rare. A Mario deck, actually. Alright, we're gonna play a land. We're gonna get in. Um, I'm gonna leave the glider back. I, I should get in, whatever. Here's Shepard. Two more mites. Alright, 
Immediate snap loot is so good for us. Uh, I mean, I'm making blocks. What do you, what do you, what have you got, my friends? A call. Show me what you got. Blazing crescendo. Okay. Still trades. That was insane for us. That was so good. Uh, okay. Take four. They play a batter fist. And we get indoctrination and then restoration back the indoctrination. The glider's on now, too? Oh, wow. They're just dead. Like, super dead. Just attack in the air. Kill them over two turns. Uh, yeah, I mean... Attendant. Bounce. Glider. Look at this. There's steamrolling here. Maybe Draft the Smith knows things that we don't. Apparently, green white artifacts is the way to go. Green white artifact infect. It would be interesting to find the level of player where blindly following drafts and improve their drafting. The thing is that, like, this one's a little ugly, but almost every draftsman takes the wheel. You almost always end up with, like, a fine looking deck. It's never amazing. Finish this here and now. All my money back. I want a refund. Draftsmith is rigged. This is bullshit. We're still gonna win this game. Uh, creature or planeswalker. I think we don't have still a very good chance to win this game. Honestly, we. Charge of the Mites, kill the Emperor, play a Flyer, and just say go. That is the best road in the format, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, I have a wrap. I, I screwed up, sure. I was up, I was up until 4 in the 4 a.m. last night playing uh playing Bronze and Mythics. I'm a little I'm a little I'm a little shaky today, I apologize. Um Yeah, we should have got shot for the Raptor and killed them. That's okay though. That's okay. We'll figure it out. Uh I think we're still in good shape, so we'll just kill the Wanderer. Yeah. Is it Miglaz better than Wanderer? I mean, it's in a better deck. And it's, it fits the format better, but it's definitely not a better card. Yeah, it's pretty ugly. Yeah. All right, we're good. We're good. We're good. It's up super late. I was like finishing Bronze Mythic. Up till four in the morning. It's all done, though. All the videos will get up on YouTube. There's no big, uh, no big follow-up here, please. Testament bearer number two. Right. Little Mardu do here. Batter fist. All right. Barring the minus one, minus one, or hex gold slash, we're good to go here. Oh, never mind. We're good to go. All right. We'll take it. Play bad. Still a piece of garbage. Win anyway. Game. Blouses. Man, that was uh, that was a close one. Six oh now, I nice. Can we draw land? Pretty odds. I'm gonna keep. I'm gonna keep. Never tell me the odds. Never tell me the odds. Would help if I got out and pushed. It might. We have the kill spell. We stumble. Throw a land. Our hand's great. That's not land. Somebody's playing a prank on me. Fine. Better than nothing. It would be awesome if Draftsman said there's a 55% chance you end up with a stronger hand. That's not even, like, reasonable. That also toes the line a little bit of, like, actual gameplay help. So, 
help, helping with the draft is just like it's just sort of just like having a draft article open at the same time and just like giving you bash reference to it for the most part. You, know, you have 17 lands open or whatever, and you're referencing it. All right, so Puncher's pretty good. Um, playing a naked Skitter Fang is not ideal. Ossification's pretty uh, off curve this turn, though. Hmm. The Raptor is so good. We have a life like from the Skitter Fang to get back some life here, so. Would I do updated two week card rankings if Rasmus asked me to? Uh, I mean, maybe. All right, three three and a one one. I'm gonna block. Show me what you got. Use your trick. Whatever. Freed from the whatever one mana trick is the worst one here, but. Tie bar stand is great. So that cost them their entire turn. Love that. Draw land here, please. Did draw land. Sick. So we can go ossification and hit this furnace punisher. And then be skitter fang, or do we restoration back the thing? I mean, skitter fang. Yeah, magic would be very, very challenging for an AI because, like, it's just so many variables, but. Bolt says, even though you have so much to do after a PT, I think you do an amazing job pushing out so much content. It's crazy. I watch a lot of Magic Twitch on YouTube. You are hands down the best content creator out there, in my opinion. A great guy, too. It makes it even easier to support me. Thanks, Bolt the Bird. Appreciate it. What's up, Dan? Yeah, that's right. They just announced that. I meant to do the ad for that. I'll, I'll do that in a second. Um, Command Fest Orlando. Special guest, maybe? Yeah, I know. It's more traveling. More travels. All right. We're going to shepherd here and just say go. I can get the, the fang flying and get in if I wanted to. I have Blifferate right here too, so. I shouldn't eat that. Very tempted to block. So we have restoration anyway. Yeah, that's fun. I'm trying to want a life like the shepherd. Draw the tackler, so you draw infectious bite. That's pretty gas. All right, we're making some moves here. The bite also deals the damage. I gave his life like I gain life too. That's pretty pretty sweet. All right, let's go in for uh. Some lifelink on this Basilica Shepherd. Trying to get that all. Oh, oh. We could also send the mites in, and uh, we can kill this, and then these can get through this. I should like that a lot. So let's go here, 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 and then would I trade Skitter Fang for Fuseling? I think I would, given that I have Restoration in, in the in the graveyard in my hand. I mean, sure. Attack like this. We're gonna bite here to here. Gain three life. They can block here if they want to. I think it's fine. Now they're infected. It matters for my three, my three one players. Gain more life, and then we can restoration back the skitter fang, and then play the lookout. What do you get for the RC? Oh yeah, I know. No, I get it. Um, yeah, Skitter Fang. Proliferate. Uh, okay. So they exile three cards at random from the graveyard, and they choose one of them to cast it. And they're going to cast... I'm sorry, it's non-creature cards. Non-creature, non-lands. So they only had one. So they just put a 4-4 flyer, they gave him a free Tyvar stand, and that's it. Still a piece of this card's a lot of work for not a lot of payoff, let me tell you. 
All right, so we're going to charge the mites this and attract the Skeeter Fang and just going to kill them. Get off my plane. Yeah, this card's got a lot of hoops for not a lot of payoff. Another furnace punisher. Their deck's like pretty good, but they're just like not doing anything. <laughs> sure. Take three, no problem. Pop this maze. That's pretty sick, honestly. Um We can like bounce Skitter Fang to reset it. Yeah, sick. Alright, so let's go. Use this. Give this flying. Send. Six. I could put them to two. If the might stack also. I like that. Send it! Damn. Uh, all right. Drasmith is OP, apparently. <laughs> Jeez. All right, folks. Pretty exciting. March of the Machine pre-release being held at Command Fest, April 14th to 16th, hosted by none other than CoolStuffInc.com. And guess who's going to be there? This freaking guy. That's right. Uh, I'm one of the many guests. Uh, MDG Nerd Girl, Power Dragon, CGB. It's going to be a lot of fun. I'll be hanging out, doing signings. Uh, this is a, a full-on content creator event, not a pro-level event. Whenever I'm playing a pro-level event, I'm pretty busy and kind of like off doing my own thing. This is going to be a, I walk around and kiss babies and, and, and shake hands and I'll sign whatever you want. I'll be doing, uh, I'll be doing you know, signings and everything else. I think I'll have a bounty on myself on the pre-release. It's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be really, really cool. So check it out. Command Fest returns uh, April 14th to 16th. Register now. Run by CoolStuffInc.com. There's your hashtag. There's your link. And uh, and check it all out. All right. It's going to be an uh, exciting, good time. I'll see you there. All right. Uh, yeah, I mean, I guess. Top 250 in the next hour. The thing is that, Dan, I don't even know, like, are you allowed to be on a different account? Like, that's a good draw. Like, my account that's tied to me is my Jim Davis MTG account. Am I allowed to play in a qualifier on my Bronson Mythic account? Like, I don't think I am. I don't know, honestly, so. Mantis, reset. Thanks so much. Alright. Um, we're going to have a, a post-combat skitter fang here, I think. Yeah, I don't think that's allowed, Dan. I'm not sure, though, honestly. Alright. Attack. I believe you were advised not to, but you also cannot give the someone else the invite, so it would be irrelevant if you already have something. Yeah, I don't know. Desi did it? Yeah. Here's Skeeter Fangs. They go. We go we have post combat here because they're not gonna block anyway, and if they do block, I wanna use the counter, so. You can't play on so you can't play on more than one account. You can't like play have to have two bullets. No blocks. Drafting potato. I know the feeling, friend. Basilisk, sure. Uh, so we're gonna give Skitter Fang flying, attack a bull by Mantis. Yeah, Lebo, I was in bed after 4 4 a.m. It's not, not healthy for me, honestly. But So we're going to trade the Basilisk for the counter on the Ambassador. So sweet. That's awesome. All right, 15. Now I can't play Mantis, but I just play the Silix. Let's go. I think Silix is actively pretty bad in our deck, but hey. 
I'm on, I'm on a charge here, so. Ooh. What do they got going on here? Don't play Ravager, please. Actually, they, they, would, they would, need, need to do that, so. Resolve this. This is actually pretty dope, because the best thing that Silix does is kill tokens. They just played right into my Silix. Like, I'm going to close they can obviously re-equip, but like I'm super happy just trading with this Tuzu here. Uh, so yeah. Goodbye. Take two. And we draw ossification also. That's pretty dope. All right, land this thing, attack, life link. This thing's a freaking house too. We got restoration too. The engraver. Okay. Um. Just gonna send the mantis into the air, I guess. Right. Restor restoring back the silix like would allow me to proliferate. But we actually want the flyer. I guess that's true. All right. I guess the restoration back to Silix. I guess I could actually. No, it doesn't work either. So I have to. I have to flip right before I use the counter. All right. Sure. This is mostly just to proliferate. Another one. Uh, yeah. What's up? What's up? Uh, what's up, Twitch chat? Nope, this is a regular, regular all be one draft. This is a uh, Drasmid takes the wheel. So my Bronze Mythic series is done. At the end of every series, once per set, I do a, uh, I do a, a draft where I allow the draft tracker Drasmith, which is usually used as like you know more of a guideline than a rule kind of thing, and I just follow every pick blindly. It's a fun thing we do, and. uh so we're doing pretty well, honestly. It's always, we always do surprisingly well. I will not be drafting the Alchemy set. I am going to do a run for uh, the Shadows of Ranistrad, though. Although it's going to be a little late, I think. Because it releases on the 21st. And I, I think I might... I'm not sure yet. Um, I might do it after the ladder resets. But I haven't decided yet. So Invite Drasmith to a testing house? Yeah, right? Let's get Drasmith on the Pro Tour. That's what we need. Just lug the computer around all right, so they have the glider now. Um, no, I'm gonna play one constructed deck. I'm gonna play until four o'clock. I have a meeting at four o'clock. I have I, right now. I have no YouTube content on the main channel. So I have to record some things. So uh, that's the that's the current plan. I should have this. I just catch killed it. Never mind. Uh, Classification. Get the machine going here. All right, draft and potatoes. Sorry, turned it into French fries. No. All right, fine, whatever. All right. The question is, can Draft Smith take on professional Magic player and one of the best, honestly, best Magic minds in in the world? Great limited mind too, and Sam Black. Sam Black. If you don't follow Sam, he's really, really good. Uh, he's very, very smart. Can we do it? I, I think so. We're going to try. We're in for a battle here with, our, with our, our pile. Look at this. One, two, three, four, five. Easy game. All right. Uh, I would like them to play a Vermiridon card. So I can... Nope, it's not going to work. Do mover, sure. Need some lands again. We are... Oh, we did it. Bingo! Alright, right, so we're going to land their Bant. I know Bant loves Bant. Uh, Sam loves multicolored bullshit piles. I kind of like playing Ossification here and then just bouncing it later. Tain 
Fiend Observer, sure. Draw the land, easy game. Um, let's see. Yeah. Look out! Kill this. Our man is like super uh, accounted for for the next few turns. I guess they have a good blocker for it. Uh, hmm. Yeah, it's fun. Love it when a plan comes together. Turn off a certification. Eh, maybe I should have killed this actually. I don't know. If they have a kill spell here, we take a pretty big hit. I should I should have cast my charge. They're getting a land too. Wow. Okay. It's not a sandbox black friendly format. Totally disagree. I think multicolor decks are super fine in this format as long as you're following the rules of engagement. Still only counts as one. It's pretty good. Um, we're just gonna kill some shit, I think. Just kill both observers. and four poison, yeah. I think we're pretty shape here, honestly. I would love to poison them a little bit for my glider, but the battle chair. Ooh, interesting. That's big. We draw another glider. Um, We could take a hit from the chair, I think. That's fine. In for one. Play Shepherd, so go. Like a draw. We can go attendant bounce lamp like glider. Once a chair attacks too, our mites can attack also, which is pretty huge, so yeah, no blocks. The chair is good, it's just slow in a very in a pretty fast format, but it is good. Voracking for a land. They want that seven land for the chair. Play a duelist, sure. And land, all right, so. Totally all in, and we draw Infectious Bite, which is honestly not great here. Um, we can Attendant, bounce a land, replay the land, and then bite down the Vorak and serve for a lot. And then have a double block on the battle chair. Yeah, because we're gonna have two, three, fours to block with also. Or we'll have one. Yeah, it's fine. Um, and then once I infect them, I can play double glider. Yeah, let's go. Oh, don't tap like that. That'd be bad. Gotta bounce planes here. Leave the attendant back. Blocks chair better. Let's throw away might, deal three. We have good blocks on chair, and next turn we double glider. Alright. Looks pretty good. Sam's out of cards. No cards in hand. So, 
If Titanic Growth is the draw, so be it. So, let's do that. Move the chair. No, play a Shepherd. Okay. So now we just go double glider and swing for the kill next turn, most likely. Or 10? Maybe not, actually. It's a lot of blockers. Hmm. All right. Just glider, glider, go. Surprise! You're infected. What's up, Samuel? What do you got for me? They tap out and battle share something. Um, my attack back is pretty good, obviously. We have, they currently have four blockers to my eight attackers. And everything has at least three power. So we have lethal. Obviously they battle share, we tap out too, so. I think we're in pretty good shape here. The chair goes on a might, which I think is, yeah, and then comes in, sure. So, we simply, we Leroy and kill them, right? They have four blocks. They block one, two, three, four. They take three, six, nine, twelve. Yep, they're dead. Let me hear you, chat. Ooh, Skitter Fang, too. Let me hear you, chat. Good lord. Gigantism. Right, block one, two, three, four, and take a bajillion. Takes twelve. Seems pretty clear, God, right? There you go. Game. Love to see it. Blouses. Three oh seven. Woo. I feel like a lot of the good thing is about Draftsmith is that. It may not draft optimally, but it helps you get out of preconceived notions you might have. So you might be doing things a certain way and not really considering you can do it a different way. And even though Draftsmith might not be totally correct about doing things other ways, it still could be like, hey, try this. And then you do it and you're like, oh, okay. I didn't really think about it like that. You know, it's why, honestly, you know, you ask, you know, people will say like, why is there's this pro tour testing team? You know, why do they have this, like, player who isn't as accomplished on the team? Or, you know, why why should a, a good Magic player listen to a lesser Magic player at, like, an FNM or whatever? And the reality is that even if they aren't as good or they're missing something overall, they still have something to get off to offer because it's just still a different point of view, you know, which I think is very, very useful. Platinum. Oh, we're dead. Tainted for two losses? That's fair. Uh, Sure. Jubal's what's up? Resub, thanks so much. I think we are running a little hot here, to be totally fair, too, but... Delphi, resub, thanks so much. Blue. Keep Seam Sketch. I mean, like, we have, we're have on the play with two four drops and a removal spell. What more do you want? Like, I don't, you can't mulligan his hand. Like, it's not great, but... Scare Fangs, sweet. That's right, folks. The jersey. Uh, there is very little time left to order your pile driver's jersey. All right. Uh, check it out. There it is. Super freaking awesome. Custom jersey. Your name. It's dope. Check it out. They're going to Phariasis and then Tablet and then not play a land. All right. They're just giving us the wins here. Come on. What are we doing here? Uh, let's decline. Order now we get it for Command Fest? I think so. You gotta ask Coalesce. Yeah, I can't I can't answer that. Sure. Command 
Inevitable Claw. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, just gonna jam. They are pretty mana screwed. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll take it, you know. They have mana off the mana rock. It's a pretty cool card, tablet completion, but we just a tendon, I guess. Bounce the land. Soul Patrol asks, do you believe in momentum when playing Magic the Gathering? Elaborate on your question, please. Only human in Discord session? Sweet. They got four mana. Like getting hot at the right time. What does getting hot mean though? You know, like what does that mean? Speaking in terms, what was your role in the team? Analytics, theory crafting, testing. Um I brought the lasagna. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I didn't do anything specifically on the team. You know, I definitely helped out with some of the administrative stuff. I like, you know, brought the lasagna, went shopping, had a car, you know, got some of the logistical things done. Um, you know, I mean, Siggy is like, you know, Siggy was kind of like the limited guy. Jakob and Brent were like the computer guys, you know, but all right. So they play retrofitter and make this into a 4-4. That's pretty good. Uh, we just kill this retrofitter, I think, right? An attack for Virgilian. I like that. I'm sorry, this, this is a not ossification. This is this is the interruption. Uh, all right. We are going to. We pass it by the bomb. They can just draw a card off of it. But the attacks this turn are still really good if we do so. So. The guy in the chair. It's actually pretty sick uh, board presence. Oh, I don't, I don't the abilities. You're right, you're right, you're right. So, okay, yeah. So let's just, uh, just hit this. They have a for your arrest. You're going to jail. And then we're going to remove a counter, give the Skitter Fang itself flying, I think. Better than everything. This is five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, I mean, the mic can come in too. Blocking the mic's a huge cost, so. They block the mic, they got a chump too, so. Double block? Okay. Sure. Down to three. Nah, I had resub. Thanks so much. There was a professional magician that played magic. Couldn't they always shuffle a bad card to top of your deck when cutting the deck? I mean, I guess that, yeah, you can cheat as but as possible, you know? <laughs> like, You can't cut your own deck, Wolf Games. It's not allowed. You can't be the last person to touch your, to touch your deck. Yeah, there's been plenty of cheating scandals in Magic, obviously. They, they always get caught, and they're always banned forever. Fortunately, who remembers uh, Trevor Humphreys? Trevor, uh, under underboard, underground, dojo, ninja, keyboard, warrior. Who remembers that? Raise your hand in chat. From about... Four years ago, five, yeah, probably like, probably like six years ago at this point, honestly, it's a long time. And I remember that. Philly Grease Silix, sure. Yeah, he was on camera. He won, he won an open, like, shuffle cheating his opponent every round. Oh, did I, I missed the, ah, whatever. That's, that's actually really bad. I missed the tap land. Sure. Uh, Silix go. Yeah, so, for those who don't know, Trevor was actually a pretty good friend of mine. We used to go to the gym together all the time. And, uh, you know, but then that happened. And then I remember I called him. I'm like, hey, man, let's go to the bar. You tell me what happens. And he wouldn't admit it to me. And then I realized that I had lost to him about a few months prior. 
in the finals of states. It was like the local states tournament, which was very important for me because I needed the, champ, the, point, the, the points of the players' championship. And I mulligan to five both games, which is kind of weird. And then I was like, yo, fuck this guy. Like, I mean, you know, the, the evidence is, is damning. You know, if he if he had admitted to doing it and apologized and like, you know, been remorseful in any way, we have to have a different discussion. But he just denied and lied about it. And just like, all right, man, thought we were friends. That's pretty awful. Fuck off, you know, <laughs> like. Yeah, pretty gross, right? Like. That is the mind of a cheater, though. That they uh, they don't care if they cheat. They just think it's part of the game. They'll cheat their friends. Don't even think about it. Yeah, so. Mandible Claw here. Um, we're gonna... I think Raptor and then Skeeter Fang into it. Yeah, cheating is not as widespread as people, as people you know, bitch about it. I, really, I actually hate those videos that, like, Nikachu makes. Like, the clickbait cheater videos on YouTube. I think they're, like, really bad for the game. Uh, because cheating is not prevalent at all. It happens once in a while. You know, people, people who do it get caught. It requires a lot of premeditation to do something like that. Uh, which is a lot of work also. And, like, does it happen? Sure. As long as you're diligent about it, it shouldn't happen to you. But, you know, you need a reminder sometimes. But, yeah, like, I just, uh, I don't know. So you can just, like, fill it, fill it green and kill the Mandible Claw here. Um, we can play Attendant and bounce a land. We don't have, have no, obviously have no, uh, no green here. Right, yeah, that, like, actual, factual, like, I'm going to manipulate your deck cheating is very, very rare. It's very hard to do. It's very easy to get caught. And obviously, you know, you are ostracized and, and banned for life, and you lose all your friends and everything. Like, it's, like, you know, pretty crazy, but thanks, Flight. Um, yeah, we're going to just attend it, I guess. Yeah. Always kill the Mandible Claw. Double Hex Gold Slash? What a bastard. Alright, um, opponent's cheating. Man, nasty slashes. Might be taking our first loss here, folks. Uh, Alright. We need to draw... Not a green card. Making it a mistake is much different than cheating. You know, and the thing is, like, there are different levels of cheating, too. Like, the most common cheat in Magic that you need to be aware of is Crimes of Opportunity. Where, like, your opponent misses, their misses like, a trigger that they have to, you have to remind them of, and you just don't say anything. Or, you know, your opponent... You know, whatever. Do you draw a card by whatever it is? Like they're not. They're sort of like this thing happens in the game that benefits you, and you just don't say anything. That's the most common, uh, most common thing. Because like, it's not premeditated where the person's not like, I'm gonna cheat, but then like it happens, and they notice that no one notices, and they're like, okay, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna, run, gonna run with this. That's the most common thing that happens. Um, and like that's why it's important to call a judge, track warnings, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, and why calling a judge is so important. But when it comes to like premeditated I'm going to shuffle your deck and put lands on the top like that's like some you know some psycho level shit like that's like you know you, you gotta like work on that that's a that's a skill you need to craft you just put a bunch of extra time into that and go into an event saying I'm going to trouble cheat my opponents you know which is very which is very different and much much worse obviously you know I think that that is almost essentially unforgivable it would require a monumental level of I wish dead a monumental level of, of like, you know, rehabilitation to come back with something like that. Whereas I think that the, 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 the crimes opportunity are much more like, you know, you easily like, you know, if the person's honest about it and like, listen, in the moment, I just thought I can get an edge and I, I fucked up and I'm sorry. And like, you know, I think it's more of a much more, you know, much more uh, palatable and there's much more of a, a path for, re for rehabilitation and remorse in that point, in that spot. All right, George Mattis screwed whatever it's dead. I guess. This happens. 
All right, uh, hands great keep. So if you there may mistakes happen in Magic all the time. Don't be afraid you're gonna be in a makes make some dumb mistake and get like accused as a cheater. As long as it's you know you just relax, explain yourself. But like, oh, I just forgot. I'm sorry, you know, it happens. Like that's and that's why they track warnings because the thing is that if you you know oh shit I didn't take a, a life loss in Frexian Arena. My bad. That happens all the time in Magic. Magic is a very complicated game, but they track those warnings because if they see a, a pattern of wow. Jim forgets to pay life for Phyrexian Arena four times a tournament every single tournament, then they investigate that. So. Chorus into Scrap Gorger. Interesting. All right, we're going to just Sentry here, I think. We won the Sand Black match yet. What would you say if you're most of your opponent kind of looking down at your deck when they are shuffling it? You just say, hey, please keep your head up. You know, hey, please make sure you're looking away from your deck. Just gotta, you just gotta say shit, you know, you just gotta be, be able to say like, hey, or if you're uncomfortable, you know, if you don't wanna be confrontational, call a judge. Just like, call, just walk, call a judge, ask to walk away from the table, and ask a judge a question, and be like, hey, I put on shuffling in a kind of a weird way, can you watch? Simple as that, if you don't wanna be like, you know, involved in the, that, so. All right, so we got sentry back, it's kind of gross. Uh, let's hover wings, attack for three, gain some life. Problem skilled. Judge is there to help you. Don't ever be afraid to call a judge. The biggest one is like that is that I think where if you're nervous, have a question. If you you think your opponent's doing something shady, if you're just if you ever if you're ever just like, unsure about anything, just call a judge and say I want to talk to you away from the table. Because it's a common thing where like you're just asking a ruling or whatever, um, and then you can ask the judge, Hey, my opponent's doing something shady. Please watch them. Hey, this is happening. Hey, whatever. So. And again, in high-level magic play, these things are very, very rare. Um, all right, drawing ossification is pretty dope here. I can hit their, their rebel. Um, you rebel scum! I can now bite the sentry. I can't actually. Had a cheater appear at least once. I'm very non-confrontational, but I even called them out trying to grab cards from his graveyard secretly. Pathetic. Just call a judge. I know, I know it's, you know, just there, there are bad, some bad apples, as always, as they say, you know, but hit their sentry? Nah. I want to, uh, I want to bounce the, I can bounce the sentry, I guess, then. That's true. I want to bounce the ossification with the attendant. Um, I guess I could have, like, bounced the sentry with the attendant, but that's cheaper to cast, so I'm just going to kill this right now. We'll kill a sentry later. Yeah, it might have been better actually. So I just like sentry. I sentry their one four and then bounce the sentry. It's a little more clunky, but it might have been better. Ew, okay. It's very poisony. Will I do be bronze? Will I, will I do bronze for alchemy? No, but I will do it for shadows of Renestrad. Man, they're coming in here. Jeez, I can't pay more attention to my game. Um, okay, Basilica three two flyer. These crawling courses are getting pretty annoying. Um, they have a life linker now too. All right, we're gonna pump the gates, pump the brakes. So we'll say go. Um, with the intent to ossify the sentry and then annex the ambassador, probably. Alright. It's fine. Okay, so. Hit the sentry. Get our sentry back. Hit the ambassador, play Flensing Raptor, fly this thing. 
attack for a good chunk. We're at six poison, which is doable, I think. If I hit this, I just move it anyway, so... It's actually a pretty awesome attack. 2-2 two, two blocks this. That blocks that. Yeah, that's pretty good. Send it! Next PT is limited standard, I believe. I'm not 100% sure. That was a pretty good draw. But they're about to land? Wow, they could have bounced the Hex Gold Hover Wings and made it a token. It's a strange play. Okay. Um, Sentry under this. Three, six. They're at 11. No, they never do all. They don't do all limited all limited PTs anymore. Huh. Just like get in for five in the air and then maybe bounce the hex cold hover wings, I guess. Need to be aware of dying to the poison, obviously, but I think we're racing that pretty well, so. All limited PTs take too long? Nah, they're great. I miss I miss all I miss all limited PTs. Draw a lamb, we get to equip this, which is great. And we have lethal. I guess they can move it and block, but. Whoa, okay. That's a card. That's terrible for us. Holy shit, they have a flying contaminator? And that hits as we die? Oh my god. We got a Basilica Shepherd? Okay. They're at six. One, two, three, four, five. So we have seven attackers, four blockers. One, two, three, four. I take three. It's not good enough. Um. Wow. Damn. I mean, Shopper Shepard's a great draw, so now I can block this contaminator safely, but make some more mites, too. Let's see go. Setting up for a Leroy next turn. Yeah, this card's unreal. Super good. Great cube card. Proliferate has a lot of fun things in cube. All right, this can't block. So they have three blockers. So if I attack with everything, they would have been block, 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 block. Take one. They don't take. They don't take five. They still are dead. Malir of a living cure. All right, so we're just like a, just a freaking rares deck. <laughs> have to block. We, we died of poison otherwise. And now I can save it too. Crap. They might have run a run a rare us here. Three blockers. One, two, three. No, nah, we have lethal now. They're just, they're just, no, wait, they, yeah, they, they, can go, they go to one. We need to draw land. If we draw land and can equip this, we win. No, that's not true, actually. I lied. Um, no, it is true. Yeah, we'll have four. Nope, that's not true. We're still one short. Damn. We just lose. This is ridiculous. How could this have happened? We attack with everything. They block one, two, three, four, and take... Sorry, they block three. They block one, two, three, and take... Oh, wait, no, 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 I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. They are dead, they are dead. They block... They can only block three things? Yeah, they're dead. All right, cool, we're good. 
So they have to block three four, three four, two two, and they take you move this thing over here. It takes they take exactly six. The land in it. Block block block. Take six. That was a close one. Killing it. 298. Woo! Smith taking the trophy? We're gonna find out. Glider, Skitter, Fang, Mantis. Oh, this is a sure thing, folks. It's why, it's why you play the games. All hail our robot overlords. Has Jasmine ever trophied? A lot of times, actually. I think this is like our sixth or seventh takes the wheel, and we probably have like three or four trophies. Like a surprising amount of times it has trophied. I'm sorry, we don't attack here. Just say go. You just block the 2 3. Tr don't, don't trade 1 for 2 damage. Did I have any 0-3s? I don't think so. That's the thing, is like, Draftsmith is rare. It's very rare to 0 3 because it always gives you like a functional deck. It may not be the best deck ever, but alright, we're gonna block. What do you got? Show me what you got, friend. Nothing. Look at that. Just run the old uh, chump check. And a scamp, sure. It's a pretty interesting deck for, uh, for being six and one. Um, play Mantis and just say go. Could Skitter Fang in the air for two. Yeah, I like that actually. We, we could bounce Skitter Fang with the, the attendant, so. I think the glider still stays home. If they kill this, they have to attack, so. Dream crushing mythic opponents out of top 250 of the season in the last hour with a draft smith deck. That's what we're doing right now. That's what's on. Those that don't know, when the season ends, if you're a certain. Oh my god, that's really good. Uh, gotta kill that. <laughs> uh, when you're a certain rank, you qualify for like qualifiers and stuff. All right, so we have Planner Interruption and Bite. Or this tax. All right, so we're going to Disruption this and then use Bite in combat, I think. I'm going to give this lifelink. Could be a little greedy here. Try and bust them up. No, I'm not gonna do alchemy drafts. Good lord, gigantism! Got him on the blocks. Oh my god, it's a massacre. Oh god. Oh jeez. Oh, gain five. Kill your creature. Gain five. Rebel Salvo would be the nut there. Yeah, I mean, if you got me, you got me, you know? Now, next turn, I can bounce Skitter Fang with the Attendant and reuse it. Discard a land. Man. What a massacre. Lifelink and Bite's nasty, yeah. Oh, that's, that's insane, actually. Love it. Got the solution for that one. No, we are running very well, to be totally fair. We're running super hot. Like, we're, we're hitting all of our spots every time. Huh. 
Helm up, sure. Just like, they play pacifism, I have the attendant. You know, like, it's all good. Um, I want to bounce Skitterfang, but we gotta bounce this, obviously. So let's bounce this. And I am not gonna use Skitterfang, I think, this turn. I'm just gonna play this glider attack for one. It's a machine conspiracy, yeah. The 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 shuffler and the draftsmith are like, sup? Hey, hey how how you doing? I'm a machine, you're a machine, we could be machines together if you want. That's a good draw. War Whip. Card's good. In cahoots. Just do it? I don't have a just do it sound drop. Uh I can give you Pop quiz, hot shot. Yeah. I we're working on worse. I have a sound re sound request channel. We draw Annex Sentry. God, we're running so hot. Um We're going to If I sentry this, like, they just move it. I think I want to wait a turn to do that. To play the Mantis and then do it next turn. So let's play the Mantis and just get it for two in the air. Get the equipment. Yeah, but, like, I think that, like, it costs a bajillion to equip. So I don't mind just... Hitting the token and making them re-equip it. They don't have a good target to put on anyway, so. Okay, that's pretty good. Uh, might have a new sentry target, actually. Double Jord Kadeen. Alright. Gonna kill that one, I think. So, let's untap. Okay, so let's draw a card. Let's start there. Let's see what we draw. Flensing Raptor. It's pretty good, actually. They have no way to actually. I'm sorry. Never mind. We got We got to kill this. There's no just no discussion to be had about it. Um, so we just sentry kill the Jor, send the Mantis Mantis in the air and get it for a bunch, and then we'll Flensing Raptor this next turn. Yeah, it all checks out for me. So, land, sentry. Good thing we help a sentry too, right? And then uh, I would not trade the attendant for the token here because I have the, ra the raptor in my hand, so. I'm just gonna like this. Just imagine being a non believer. Crack the furnace. What's well, here for the believers, though? I mean, I I would have bet my life on non-believer in this draft, um, personally. But we ran pretty well, honestly. No, nah, no alchemy drafts. We're draw here drawing very well. Uh, yeah, it's fire in the raptor. And jump this thing. Attack with everything. Let's try and kill them. Let's try and kill them. Let's go for it. If they have a rule spell here, things might get ugly. They have bolt charge. Alright, so they couldn't kill the sentry. They could have killed the sentry in combat. They could have got really bad, but... That was pretty good, actually. Um, I think they're still dead, but... You can't jump mantis to like those toxic creatures. So they're at one, and I have three flyers in play. So... Don't think they have any outs. Thirty-one shot. 
Draft Smith takes the wheel. I got a question for you. Question for every single one of you out there in TV land. You got me. You got me. Take the hit. Right to the chin. I have a question, y'all, folks. For every single one of you viewers, all 540, whatever of you, and all my YouTube viewers. Draft Smith takes the wheel. Seven and one. Somehow, some way. Um, I'm not gonna lie, folks. This I feel like this was the worst Draft Smith deck we've ever had. Uh, and I am somewhat shocked that in Mythic we went seven and one. We definitely ran really well. Let's take a look at uh, over at the untap. And again, download untap for yourself for your own draft smith. Please use my link. Very important to use my link. Uh, they sponsor me, and I, I, they need to know that I sent you there, so they can be like, "Hey, Jim, you're doing a great job." So let's check out draft smith. This is, this is untapped, of course, part of draft smith. Tracks all your games. You can see here um, everything that we've done in this entire series. And um, yeah, I don't know what to tell you. I mean, the deck doesn't look particularly great, but our card quality is reasonably high. Um, and we just won. I don't. I don't really know what to say. I mean, the the attendance are good. We definitely hit our spots. Manus Riders. Manus really is really good. Obviously. Uh, yeah. What can I say? The machines are smarter than me. That's all I can say. All right. YouTube folks, love you. Like, comment, subscribe. Let me know if you enjoy Drasma Takes the Wheel because it's a fun series we do after every Bronze and Mythic run. And I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks, folks. Appreciate it. Have a good one.